How's it going, Grey Boys? It is week 13, and we have what might be the most important game of our season coming up this week. We play a 6-4 and four ball state, so on the surface you would think that it's not a huge deal, but we are fighting with the Cardinals for a chance to play in the MAC Conference Championship game, and if there's enough chaos, which I won't expect, but you never know, if things go absolutely bonkers, this game theoretically could have some playoff implications. Now, of course, we're favored to win this game, but Ball State is the higher overall team and they look better in a lot of statistical categories. They actually have a really solid defense, 17th in the country with the number eight rush defense, and they have a plus six turnover differential. So very, very impressive. Uh, they haven't, like, beat a crazy amount of good teams, uh, but they've also lost to some good teams. They lost to the current number two, Auburn, in week one. Lost to Florida Atlantic. Uh, beat a couple of teams. Lost to Ohio on the road. Lost to a current number 13, USC. They got manhandled in that one, 27-3. But since then, a three-game winning streak with wins over Western Michigan, Toledo, and NIU. But that 4-6 and six NIU squad, they barely squeaked out a win. So we will be definitely hoping for the best. And I think that there's a chance we could get this done. Recruiting-wise, we have some points to give out. And it's because we got locked out by Arthur Robertson. And we can't open the door, which is a shame. 1,500 points behind with a visit next week. If we could open the door and then get that visit in, we would be... Uh, in a great position to pick up the 79 overall guard. Unfortunately, that's just not the case. They don't want us to pick him up, so we'll go through and find some other players maybe more deserving of those points. Uh, and hopefully we can just continue to gain and extend our leads and open up leads. And I think Jason Green, this corner, will give him the points. And then we have a few visits that we need to schedule. I don't think we'll be scheduling for them for this game, but you just never know. There's the visit. Uh, we could send them to the Ball State game, but we're going to go with Northern Illinois just to continue to get those complimentary visits. Uh, and that game's going to have so much riding on it. Three complimentary visits for Joe Rivero, the middle linebacker. So that is absolutely huge implications. We need to uh, bring the hammer down on NIU, but obviously... Ball State is the more important game because it's the one that we have to play right now. Now, since we're kind of nearing the end of the season, I wanted to take a look at some conference uh, championship playoff races, see what's going on. Notre Dame easily winning the ACC Atlantic. They're 9-0. Clemson 5-3 in conference uh, is the closest uh, opponent to that. So that's certainly not going to go anything. In fact, I would say Notre Dame is probably already clinched. And in the Coastal, it's Georgia Tech with a 7-1 conference record. They're ahead of Pitt and uh, North Carolina. Uh, but 9-1, sitting at 10th in the country. Uh, you got to think they got decent odds, especially because Pitt is only a 79 overall team. And the American, it's Houston with the lead over Cincinnati. Both teams looking really solid. at Houston, number 6 in the country. Cincinnati at a number 12. Uh, and then you fall off into the two lost teams, but even then USF ranked. So the American uh, getting some respect in the polls. It'll just be interesting to see who ends up winning the conference. And in the big 12 right now, it's Texas eight and one. The Longhorns are number 11 in the country undefeated in conference. Uh, Oklahoma State, probably the only team with a chance to do anything, but they're going to need a, quite a bit of luck. Now, the Big Ten East is between Penn State and Michigan State. Uh, both teams 6-1 in conference. Michigan State 8-2 and two on the season, and they're unranked. That is wild to me. Um, wow, I just can't believe it. A close race there. Michigan still in shouting distance as well. And uh, in the West, uh, it looks like it's all Purdue. 8-0 for the Boilermakers, sitting at number one in the country, which is just absurd to me i'm curious if they can keep that up uh, nebraska the only team that could potentially fight for that this usa east is western kentucky leading in front of middle tennessee state and marshall and the usa west is rice leading over utep our two independents are doing better than they have in the past byu still four and seven but army 
10 and 0 number five in the country the black knights trying to surprise some people maybe earn their way into a conference for us in the mac east it's ohio at six and two i think we lost to the bobcats if i'm remembering correctly uh, so we could have a chance to play them or maybe it's going to be miami or akron I would feel comfortable playing any of these teams, but Ohio being 72 overall, I certainly uh, wouldn't mind another crack at them. For us in the West, obviously, we are in the lead, but again, tied with Ball State, both teams 6-1 and one in the conference. So uh, as far as I'm concerned, the winner of this game almost certainly will be representing the Western Division in the conference championship. In the Mountain West Mountain, it is between Air Force and Boise State with Colorado State trying to hope for something crazy. And in the West, it's uh, Hawaii and Fresno State both doing really well. Fresno State 9-1 on the season and unranked, but 7-0 in conference. So they're trying to, uh, I don't know, get a little bit of respect there. And for Hawaii, the Rainbow Warriors are number eight in the country, 10-0. Uh, we need them to lose just so that we can get ranked higher. Pac-12 North is unfortunately between Washington and Oregon State. This is my worst nightmare. Uh, Huskies and Beavs fighting that one out. Oregon, no chance. Cal could maybe sneak in there. And in the South, it's going to be USC uh, with a pretty clear lead over Utah in second place. The FCC East is the Florida Gators, 10-0, number three in the country, 8-0 in conference. And it's our Teal Boys sitting there at number two they started the season with two early losses but it seems like they're on a pretty big winning streak i remember those losses came early and they were both in conference for them so uh their second and third games but since then just getting wins decently large victories as well maybe struggled a little bit against tennessee but i mean you like to see it and this is probably as good as they could hope for they play florida as their last opponent, so maybe a chance to cause some chaos there. Although now that I mention it, yeah, Florida's already sealed it. They're just trying to go undefeated in conference because their last game is going to be against Florida State. So Teal Boys won't be able to make the SEC uh, championship, but a good win against uh, the number three team in the country. Maybe it jumps them up in the polls and they can get to a better bowl game. Now on the other side, it's the number two team in the country, Auburn, 7-0 in conference, 10-0 on the season. And they're being chased down by Ole Miss, Bama, and LSU, but I think they have it clinched already. So, Auburn, Florida for the SEC Championship. How about the Sun Belt? Our final conference, it's Georgia Southern, number seven team in the country. Again, another undefeated team on the year. Uh, there's no chance that they don't win the conference. So, uh, for them at this point, they're just hoping they can continue to win and maybe they can sneak into the playoff. Well, enough of that. Let's get into our game. I want to play some football. I want to see what we can do. 72 overall for us. For Ball State, it's a 75. They've got a 74 offense and a 78 defense. So uh, I don't know what's going to happen, but it could be very interesting. We're at random uniform stages now. So, well, I guess they're just wearing their standards away. And for us, Alt 4. Just throw on the white pants and call it a day. Let's see what we can do here. Again, coming into this one, Ball State with some decent rankings. Offensively, they're not scoring a lot of points, but they're running the ball really well. Uh, and defensively, I mean, that's just impressive. Their worst ranking on defense is their pass D at 31st in the country. So we're pretty close. I think our average position is higher than theirs or better than theirs. But that pass defense definitely drags us down a little bit. Uh, this is going to be a tough one. Certainly not going to be easy, and there's a lot riding on it. And apparently... We have Jeff Fontenot, the four-star wide receiver visiting. So unlikely to get his recruit goal, but you never know. We could get a nice bonus. Their top players, an 87 overall wide receiver. That scares me with an 85 overall D tackle and an 83 overall strong safety. We know we have an injury, but thankfully, I don't know if that feels right, but thankfully they have some as well. Running back is probable. Outside linebacker is probable, but they have a tight end out for the season. It feels like it's been quite a while, but we're back at Ryan Earson Stadium. Two more games on the season, both of them at home. Hopefully we can end it with two positive notes. Ball State wins the toss and is going to elect to kick this one off on, a again, a nice sunny day here in the late fall. 
We're going to see what Pool can do as we get this one underway. And this is uh, a really big game. So hopefully we come out swinging, blocking close to good. I had to try to make it work around the edge, but we're just not quite there. I do want to say that you guys should expect a little bit of a delay here or a pause and uploads for a bit. I will be out of town for the holidays because Durham Finch just gets 10 yards. But I will not be able to make or record or edit any videos for about a week. So hopefully uh, when I get back, I can crank out a few to make up for it. But just so you know, I'm fine. I'm just not at the computer. Second carry there doesn't go for much, but maybe it opens something up. Jerome Simmons comes in, but we're going to go with a play action pass. Not feeling a lot of pressure. Trying to wait. Trying to be patient. This is a risky throw. Wilson stopped running. Oh, John Wilson was going to be wide open there, but he stopped running. Tried to extend that as long as we could, but receivers gave up on me. Now, third and ten, having to go to the air. What can we do? Stepping back, looking, waiting over the middle. Morris comes down with it through the contact. That was a risky throw, but it paid off. Hopefully, we don't have to pass too much. I know that 250 yards could be big for us in picking up a recruit today, but we got to win it. And I think running is going to be the big thing. What I have to keep in mind, though, is just how good their rush defense is. So passing the ball a lot early in this game. This will be our third attempt as we step back, trying to wait. And that was just, again, a bad throw from Albert. Was trying to throw that to Morris on that crossing route, but Albert missed him by, like, five yards. So the offense has now started to dig a hole for us. And it's up to the defense to try and save it. Great field position for the Cardinals on their opening drive. First and 10. I'm calling this one a run to the left. We'll see if we can stop it. Trying to bring some pressure. They're going to step back to throw. Quarterback has to just get rid of it. The coverage was good, but the pressure was even better. I know they have a really good wide receiver, so I'm worried about that. But also, I just feel like we're going to see a decent amount of running. This one tried to string him out, but couldn't get their big tackle from Blair to not give up the first down. And in the hopes of just getting off the field here, I'm bringing everything. Trying to stop them here. They keep it. The quarterback doesn't get the pitch out on the triple option. It's a loss of three, and that'll bring up a fourth down. Corey Poole getting in there for the tackle for loss. This might be my worst case scenario. They're going to go for it early in the game, but they do not want to have any part in us getting stops. So they put the tight end in motion, and on fourth and three, they step back. We're trying to bring some pressure. It's not there. Jackson couldn't make the tackle. And Aaron Blair gets the first down. I just feel like I need to keep blitzing, and I'm going to do it. Just, I know that this is going to be a run, so why would I not blitz? They couldn't do anything other than run. It's just a guarantee. Slip screen works as well. Unfortunately, unable to get to that one, maybe for a pick, but we do drop him for a loss of four. Tyrone Temple completes it, but unfortunately for him, it just doesn't work out that time. Second and 14 now expecting them to pass if they hand it off. So I'm about like zero for 30 on guessing what they're going to do today. And on third and 10, hopefully we don't get burned. Trying to stick with the man coverage here and seeing what our guys can do early in the game. And we'll just hope for the best as they do step back. I didn't mean to get on alignment, but I didn't. Fox with the interception. He flew out in front of that one. He's going to get a good return. No chance at the pick six. Dude turned on the afterburner and just yoinked that ball out of the air. So now we have good field position. Both teams with an interception on the day. And we're going to go triple option early on this drive. Seeing if we can beat them. And I just gave them the ball back. <laughs> I, got, I got a little bit too greedy there. I saw a home run play in my mind. I knew that that pitch was going to be risky. And I did it anyways. And well, maybe one day I can stop shooting myself in the foot here. So the defense dug us out of the first hole. <laughs> Can they do it twice? I don't feel too confident, but you just never know. Uh, Something's going on there. There's a right bumper. Quarterback, no chance to get that pitch off, and he's going to lose four yards. They even call that a sack. Uh, interesting. We'll take it. So far, I feel like bringing pressure has worked relatively well for us today, so we're just going to continue with that. They go towards the outside. The pitch is also still an option. 
It's third and inches again. We've stopped it once. We're going to do whatever we can to stop this one again. Maybe an option expected. They... Oh, we had the quarterback. We got him anyways. Fourth and one. The defense playing out of their minds right now. I don't expect them to go for this one, but we'll see. The pump formation out as I kind of feel like we might have got away with a face mask there, but we are just going to be in the safe zone here. Don't want them faking this one, and they will bunt it away for pool. I got to take the fair catch. I think maybe there was a chance that... Or I guess I could have let it bounce in the end zone, but... I just thought we were about to get popped if I tried to field it. Just a battle of defenses right now, which is, I mean, kind of par for the course for us. We know that our defense is the better unit. We just have to harness that, try to throw a check down, give it to Finch Jr., let him get some yards for us. He's been the most consistent with that all season long. And let's just continue to give it to him. Why not? Second and two, run it up the middle. Finch, nothing. Man, this run defense feels really strong for Ball State right now. We've been struggling to get past the line of scrimmage on most running plays. We're going to continue with though. Jerome Simmons, his first carry of the day, trying to cut it north and not even going to be close. Again, stopped at the line of scrimmage. Nothing else that we can really do here except for punting the ball away. There's a little bit of a crosswind. I'm just going to put it down there and See what we can do. Uh, the blocking looks incredible for them to start with, so a decent chance to return. And once again, they're across the 50 to start their drive. Both defenses just locking it down right now. So who's going to be the first to break? I expect it to be us, but you never know. Defense could continue to hold. It's time. Stepping back. Picked off Fox. It's his second of the game. And there's going to be the first points. Nobody's going to catch him. It's a pick six. Oh my goodness, Chris Fox having himself an afternoon. So the strong safety gets us onto the board first and truly lockdown defense all around. Yeah, we're at the end of the first quarter. We got to hit our extra point, but up 7-0. I guess that's 7-0 assuming I hit this. Kick is good. They came awfully close to blocking it, but they're not me, so they're not going to have the chance. So Akron beats Kent State. That might mean something for the end of the races, but how about this? End of the first quarter, three interceptions and a fumble in the opening game. A sack for us as well. Whose offense is going to figure it out first? Will it matter? If both teams' defenses just continue to play this way, we might not see an offensive touchdown. Special teams doing okay that time for Ball State, but the Cardinals have their worst field position now gotta be honest i'm very tempted to continue to blitz here but we're gonna dial it back just for one play with the hopes that they wouldn't run and they do run it up the middle that's their biggest run yet 11 yards for jeremy harris the hurry up for ball state maybe catching us out a little bit expecting them just to keep running like this it's another handoff and again out towards the edge for jeremy harris and that's why we got to bring the pressure this one Going to be a run. They won't hand it off. Quarterback's going to keep it. We were there to stop him. We forced him to pitch it away, and it's Walters getting the tackle for loss. Byron Miner loses three yards. It's third and five. If they want to just keep running the same play, that's fine, but we're expecting a pass on this third and five. They do step back looking to throw. Quarterback, plenty of time, gets it away, and it's Frank Blair getting burned on that deep curl 20 yards downfield. So the Cardinals get a new set of downs to work with. And again, we're expecting runs. We're bringing the blitzes. Quarterback keeps it. He's got the pitch man available. He gets the pitch out. And that might be the offensive touchdown we've been looking for, especially when your team starts to tackle itself. Tony Rivero, 39 yards into the end zone. Our defense, the first to break. Now it's going to have to be our offense taking the field. And that kind of worries me. Oh, let's hope that we get good field position here at least. I'll expect this kick to be returned, taken from the one. Corey Poole. Yeah, okay, cool. Tackled it at the 18. That's great news. Well, let's try this triple option again. See if we can get our home run play this time. Uh, not looking too good. Rush defense, too strong. Not even a chance to get the pitch off. I legitimately don't know if our offense is good enough to score against this team, especially 
When my wide receivers are get up, given up on plays, we can get that one to Zach Wilson, make it a manageable third down, but I don't know if we can even run for this. Our offensive line has been so big this season, but uh, their run blocking, not there yet. Third and two. I am going to hand it off up the middle. Durham Finch, plenty of space that time. That was a gap the size of the Grand Canyon. We get 10 yards and a new set of downs. Still, though, I am worried about our passing and our running abilities, so we're going to continue to keep throwing it for now, trying to catch them off guard and hoping that our receivers don't hurt us anymore. Morris just dropped it. That's a rough play to have happen because now it's a second and ten instead of a second five or four, whatever it would have been. The counter giving it to Finch. He's got no blockers. Still manages to get a yard, though. And I'm not certain we're in four down territory just yet, but we're definitely getting close. Stepping back again to throw on a third down, hoping for the best. Why is wide open? Morris catches that one. Not a whole lot we can do to get yards after the catch, but we are back across midfield. They tried to bring pressure on that one. We recognize it. It gets picked up enough, and we find the open man. So I will take that every time. This time, a handoff to Durham Finch, who... Kind of looked like he got slingshotted forward, but got nine yards as a result. And maybe the defenses, now that they don't quite have as fresh a legs, maybe they've slowed down a hair or two. Albert Johnson keeping it on the read option. That's a big carry for him. And now we'll go with another play action. I'm looking end zone on this one, but they're not bringing a whole lot of pressure over the middle. A is open. Palmer, good catch from Brian there. That's another first down, and the offense just continue to churn away. If they can't stop us, I'm not going to shoot myself in the foot voluntarily. Although there's still a chance for us to make a mistake. Jerome gets a yard on that run up the middle with absolutely nowhere to go. And we'll see if the stubbornness pays off because we're just going to run it straight up the middle again. Second and nine. Not a lot of space, but it opens up. And Durham Finch Jr. with the first and goal down to about the two yard line. So our defense scored, then their offense, now our offense. We just have to keep their defense from scoring and we'll be good. Inside two minutes left in the half. Albert keeping it on the read. Uh, I don't know why that was so difficult, but we get into the end zone. <laughs> he almost didn't. We'll take it. Back up a touchdown, 14 to 7 with a minute and 49 left in the half. Let's hope for just another good kick here. Hope for the best from the special teams. Brian's not the guy to do it. Can Holt get down there? No. Yeah, again, we're not really holding these guys very well. Well, these guys want to continue to run the ball. We're going to continue to bring as much pressure as we can. Probably should expect a lot of passing on this drive as Fox has a great hit there. But I just feel like our coverage isn't good enough to last a super long time. So we have to get pressure on the quarterback. And the only way we're going to do that is if we bring a bunch of pressure. This one, again, just a man wide open linebacker can't catch up to him. So they get the first down. And this is bad news for us just because Ball State can pretty much burn the clock on this drive and leave us with almost nothing to play with ourselves. They tried to run a little bit of a pick play, but it doesn't work out that time. Pass falls incomplete. And on second and 10... Again, expecting to see the pass. What can we do to stop it? We step back over the middle. Good catch. Simple as that. Good catch from Chester Porter. Quarterback already has two picks on the half. I'm hoping that we can find another one. Bring in a little bit of a blitz still. We get to the quarterback. We get the hit on him. And he's forced to throw it away. If we can just keep them to field goal range and nothing better, that would be a successful drive for me. Again, pressure. Quarterback, kind of surprising he refuses to scramble since they run the option so much. But that time he finds the completion for seven, and it's third and three. So what will they do here to get the stop? Stepping back. Oh, no. Yeah, that's on me. I didn't think he was going to go there. I didn't think they were going to go there, so I cheated up to try and help over the middle. And I paid the price. Well, this is at least one of the higher scoring games we've seen in a while. 14 all, a minute and two left in the half. We have all our timeouts. Can we find some more points? As that's a pretty solid return from Stan there. Almost out to the 30. 
I'm gonna immediately open this one up with uh, a four vert and see if we can catch him out here. Stepping back, they're bringing pressure. Throw Morris open. No problem. Let's go in the hurry up. I'm looking touchdown or nothing right now, so let's hope it's a touchdown. Trying to wait over the middle. Wilson comes down with it. That was again, maybe not the best throws. The clock's moving. And the clock really burned away. Probably should have taken a timeout, but we'll see what happens. Inside 30 seconds, waiting. B's open. We get the first down to Curtis. That will temporarily stop our clock. Allow us to set up with that first down one. Get the playoff. Continuing to work. A was open. We're going to throw it over the middle to B. Mitchell holds on to it. Great catch from Sean. Another first down to stop the clock. Time starting to run thin here. I have all our timeouts. We got to make sure that we use them if necessary. Y is open. Morris was running the wrong direction when he caught it. That's a shame. That could have been a big gain. So there's our first timeout taken with 13 seconds. We should be in field goal range, assuming we don't make any big mistakes. Now, what can we do with it? Y over the middle. Morris comes down with it. Slips the first tackle and it's a first and goal with eight seconds. This is so risky. We're going to run it on this first and goal. Try the read option to see if we can get in, but expecting to take the timeout immediately. Albert keeping it. There's some blocking, but not enough. We got a yard, four seconds now. I said touchdown or nothing, and that's what we're going to have to go with, and it's going to be a fullback dive. I don't feel confident. I just don't think we can get a pass attempt off with this much time. So we'll see what Robertson can do up the middle. Jeremy into the end zone. And we will retake that touchdown lead as the clock shows three still. So maybe a chance for Ball State to do something. It's going to be 21 to 14. We'll just have to hope that the special teams doesn't completely botch this and give up our lead. I would love to go into the half with a touchdown in our favor. And it's going to go that way. 21 to 14 into the locker rooms. I mean, our running has kind of struggled, but has come through clutch in a couple of big plays. The defense has been honestly pretty spectacular. They're, they're one, they're, they have two offensive touchdowns, but one of them came from me just playing like a doofus. So uh, they're doing a solid job. Two turnovers, multiple sacks. You love to see it. Just got to have more of that. Uh, maybe figuring out the run a little bit better. I think we're doing a decent job of stopping them. So as long as we don't shoot ourselves in the foot, we got a good chance to win this game. The sun starting to set here on Ryan Earson as Jones gets us underway to start this third quarter. And, oh, we almost gunned down on him so well. Still kept them inside the 25, so good field position for the defense to work with. Fully expecting Ball State to run this triple option on first down. So we're going to be prepared for it. Run to the left. And, no, oh, it's kind of a weird one. Quarterback gets tackled. Maybe thought it should have been a face mask, but a loss of three. I'm going to be honest. I really liked that option play. If we didn't have the edge shield up bringing so much pressure, that one would have been huge because I was fully expecting it to go to the left. We get lucky, and that one's picked off by Jackson, the third pick from the defense. He's not going to be able to take it the distance either, but the big boy, number 96, gets the third pick of the day. The right end. Stepping back into coverage. Great hands there. As he, I think he's filling in as a linebacker. You know, it's not surprising that the defense is carrying us, but it is nice. They've been doing a good job all year, and this is really cementing the fast a statement game for our defense so far. Love a few more turnovers, though. Hopefully that's not me being too greedy. As uh, Well, I'm going to look to pass. The play action, second and ten. See what we can do. A could be open if we could get it off in time. That was a touchdown to the back of the end zone. But it's a nine-yard sack, and it's third and a mile. Then I feel like the interception is just going to be turned into uh, three and out. Maybe a field goal if we can get back into field goal range. We'll see what we can do. Stepping back, they're bringing some pressure. Trying to wait, throwing it super late. Wilson! Goal! It was in his hands, but he dropped it. So it's 4th and 19. And I don't think that we can make this a 49-yard field goal. It's going to take everything. We got all of it. Kicked it straight enough. It's no good. Oh, that was so close. So close. Will this view give us something good? Hey, props to the man 
a yard short on a 49 yarder the very least it allowed the defense to get a little bit of rest and now we can come back out and try to bring some pressure again bringing the big blitz on first down this one's going to be bad news blair needs to get that tackle but it's not coming so we give up nine yards on that play and i hate it when we bring a blitz and it doesn't work because now i got to bring another blitz and oh, pray that they don't try to pass it we know that they're going to hand it off we were there but we get bowled over that dude tried to hurdle and then he got obliterated but not before he picked up the first down everything in my heart is telling me that they're just going to continue to run but i gotta play it safe here back it out a little bit they do hand it off and actually we get a great stop there just a gain of one and maybe enough for us to open it up now i'm gonna bring the pressure and expect the pass and no, oh, it's another option. Quarterback keeps it. Doesn't get the first down a third and inches again. I think that's the third time this game. Well, we're bringing everything again. Expecting the run. Can we get there in time? Tried to jump the snap. It's a bad toss. He just missed the toss. It's incomplete. So now it's fourth and inches. And they have converted on the one attempt so far today. But can they do it again? Trying to clog up the middle though. A false start from the offensive lineman there. That's going to be it. They, they got a punt now. I think it might have been the left guard that moved. Uh, but we're fine with it. In the safe zone here. Because I expect these teams to fake constantly on us. It's not going to be the case here. If we can get a lucky block. Nope. <laughs> Pool. They say he got a two yard return. I'm not so certain about that. Well, the offense had great field position the last time out on the field and couldn't do anything with it. They want to bring pressure on this one. And well, we need to forvert this. I need something where they get away quick. And we'll see if we can burn the coverage. Get all our heart routes set pressure is coming x could be open we release it mitchell catches it in stride he's off to the races across the 40 getting some stiff form cheese down to the 28 yard line a huge pass play from albert they gotta disguise the pressure a little bit better than that albert man i didn't think we would have a chance for 250 passing yards but he's at uh, like 186 right now which is massive as jerome simmons gets a great first down carry that's a huge pickup of six. Two-headed attack from the offense today. And honestly, the passing has been better, which is something that's rare for us to be able to say over the middle. Couldn't get it off in time. Oh, that's a shame. Kind of thought Albert was going to have a little bit more time than that, but maybe I should expect better than that or expect less. Uh, third and four, we're going to run it. Give it to Jerome Simmons. He picks up one block, cuts inside, breaks a tackle, and falls forward over another defender. Strong running to move the chains that time. And if they can't stop it, well, we're going to give it to him again. This time, though, with Stan Williams. I know some of you guys think he should be put back to the second string, but I see this like an ace up the sleeve. Instead of giving Stan a bigger role earlier in the game... We keep his stamina high, and that way when the defense is tired, Stan can come in and do a really good job in like the late third and into the fourth quarter. All right, third and two inside the 10, but I'm stepping back to pass, which could be maybe a little bit controversial. We'll see if this one works for us. Just need a couple of yards. That's all we're looking for. Right bumper was open. I threw it late. Oh, I said we just couldn't shoot ourselves in the foot. That's almost what I did there. And we could be doing it again here, trying to score the touchdown. It's fourth and two, and another read option. Albert keeping it. Needs more. Not going to get it. They sniffed that one out. That was tough. Maybe should have just gone to sign up the middle. Maybe another fullback dive. It's been a defensive battle all game long, and it continues. The Cardinals will take over inside their own 10 and that's not going to help them another false start from the offensive line you love to see it still first down and i'm still bringing pressure in fact i want to bring pressure even more this is going to be a run can we stop it oh they step back to throw he almost threw that one backwards it's incomplete second and 15 we brought the house and it almost did not pay off and eh, you know what we're going to continue to do so just got to keep running at these guys Hope that they make mistakes. 
A lot of stuff out towards the edge. Hopefully they don't run it weak side. It's a play action over the middle. They have the completion. That was a quick release. Third and six now. And you are fooling yourself if you think that I'm not bringing pressure again here. On third and six, they step back to throw. We got the sack. Oh, my coverage was bad, but the defense steps it up again. Eric Lane with a huge sack there. It's fourth and 14. The pressure paid off. And we're going to go pump block here. Who knows? Maybe something crazy happens. I doubt it. But 30 seconds or 36 seconds left in the half. And look at this. We're getting great field position. Corey Poole, can he just change directions? Corey Poole, one man to beat as long as there's not penalties on the field, is into the end zone. And it's the special teams and the defense absolutely holding it down today. That's going to be a two touchdown lead. And now the defense will have a chance to get back out onto the field and continue to dominate. I want to see something good from Walters here. So close. Oh, so close to plug in that one. All right, we're going to change it up on him here. Big adjustment. We're going to go uh, almost no pressure for this entire drive and just see if we can slow them down. Quarterback keeps it. Nowhere to go. Has to cut it upfield, and he gets three yards. But at this point, here's we're at five seconds left in the quarter. Uh, I'm not going to try to slow them down. If they want to continue to run the ball, it hurts them. Ooh, Colbert stumbles down. That's going to be the end of the third as we will have a third and two to defend, but we are up 28 to 14. The defense continues to do well. The special teams continues to do well. The offense, well, we don't expect too much from them. They're doing okay. One quarter to play. These guys are two of seven on third downs, but I'm not going to defend against the run. If they want to hand it off and we can't get there, that's fine. That wasn't our goal to stop at that time. Because we can just let them run. The clock is going to continue to burn, and you're down two scores. If this is how they want to play it, I won't be against it. Another first down. They are nearing midfield this time. There's the play action. Oh! Oh! We almost just yoinked it. Oh, Lane, you got to hold on to that. Baited him into throwing it to the running back out in the flat, and it just bounced off of Eric Lane's hands. Could have been the fourth pick of the day. Not the case. There's a broken tackle, and then he kind of got tackled by his own fullback. So it's a third down again. And I'm curious to see what can we do to stop these guys on this big third down. They will step back to throw. Trying to cover over the middle of the field. There's another sack. That's a coverage sack as the defense continues to dominate here. It's fourth and 11, and I'm not going to be worried about them faking it because I don't think they have the balls. Five minutes left in this game, and we're getting the football back, which means we can just continue to burn the clock unless Corey Poole has other options. He's got some good blocks. Corey Poole sending the kicker in retreat, and he's going to take two in a row. The punt return king move over Marquise Jackson. It's Poole's time to shine, and, well, maybe that makes a little bit of sense. Holding brings this back a long ways very conflicted about that one because it was the right end Josh Jackson who got called for the hold and he got an interception earlier in the day so I think he's just kind of neutral right now one more mistake and he's going to be sitting on the bench Jerome Simmons made four yards out of what I thought was going to be a gain of nothing and man I would be lying so much right now if I said I wasn't tempted to run some trick plays but we got to keep it simple we got to run this football and we got to win this game right here and right now. I don't care if it could be considered too early to start burning the clock, but we need to win this game no matter what. Third and three, giving it to Simmons up the gut. The blocking is there. That's a first down. And now Ball State's in trouble. They're going to have to start calling those timeouts really, really soon. It's not to say I won't help them. We're going to look to pass on this one. Because at this point, we have a comfortable lead, and I do want Albert to potentially get to 250 passing yards. One at a time probably isn't good enough, though. It's at 187 with a pick on 13 of 19 through the air. That is not bad. Two minutes, 38 seconds on the clock. Great blocking. Huge blocking. Jerome Simmons crosses the 45. That puts us over 100 yards rushing as a team. All right, screw it. We're running our trick play. We need some sort of passing yards. We'll see if it can work. 
Trying to wait for it. A is open. Quarterback has the blockers. Albert, what are they doing? Oh, Albert could have been gone, but they just didn't block well enough for him. The trick play worked phenomenally. Maybe I needed to wait another second to let those guys continue to move, but it is second two. We forced them to take their first time out. And the trickeration worked as well. We just have to get the passing yards as a team as well. So that counted as eight, putting us closer to 200. And now it's going to be passing from here on out. I think we've won this one already. So what can we do to keep it alive? Trying to throw it up. John Wilson comes down with it. That's 10 more yards. And the final timeout taken for the Cardinals. Just nothing that they can do to stop us at this point. And, well, we're just going to keep throwing it. Zach Wilson into the end zone. Let's make this a nice convicting, uh, convincing victory. That would have been a really cool line if I could just have said it properly. You know, I just realized that uh, this being the Christmas episode, uh, we're a green team playing a red team. And there's a lot of white on the field. How festive. And now you guys can hear my thought process, but we're going to make a very festive thumbnail. And it's going to say something like a Christmas miracle. And it's going to be great. Hey, while we're here, if you guys were wanting to get me a Christmas present, um, well, they just spiked the ball. Dang it, I ruined my spiel. Anyways, if you wanted to get me a Christmas present, liking the video and subscribing would be big, but if you want to go the extra mile, and maybe you want to get uh, a recruit or a player named after you, you could become a member. Uh, link down in the description below for that. First and 10. Ball State is moving the ball pretty well on this drive here. Um, very well, in fact. Thomas, good tackle. He needed that one. I wouldn't mind if they scored and we could get the ball back, though. We know that we need to throw a couple more passes. So maybe we let them into the end zone. A minute and 23 on the clock. They step back. An interception would be huge. This one, Fox isn't going to get there for his third of the day. That was a great throw. Sean Samuels come down with it. Ball State's not saying die yet. Let's see how the hands teams does on this one. Kicker with the onside kick. Puts it out. Oh, well, it's fielded immediately. Good hands from Sean Mitchell there. Man, this one should have been done already, but Albert's coming back out. <laughs> We're just going to continue to have him throw. We'll see if we can catch somebody out. Uh, this is a risky one. <laughs> kind of threw that into triple coverage. Should have been picked off. I picked my man. And it didn't pay off. So <laughs> now we go back and we try it again here. See if we can get somebody, anybody open really. Why could be coming open? Why, uh, why was open? Threw it too late. Tried to throw it too late. It's a huge sack. Lost the 13th. <laughs> Man, in this quest to uh, pick up some passing yards, it's really not going all that well. Maybe we can do something here. Somebody's got to get open, right? Palmer? I'm heaving it deep. We'll see what Morris can do. Comes back to it. Oh, how did he drop that? Oh, that's so frustrating. Well, we're throwing one deep here on 4th and 23. And if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. But I'm going to pray and hope that it does. They're not bringing a crazy amount of pressure. I threw it to the wrong guy. Jeremy Robertson came in. Threw it to the wrong guy, though. So we get some passing yards, but we are eight short of what we need for our goal. <laughs> I don't know if we're going to be able to get more. I could try to play with some fire here and just let them score, but I think that would be the most foolish thing to do. So we're not going to even try it. Quarterback steps back and throws. Well, I didn't let them score. <laughs> oh, gosh. We're in danger. We lose this game. I will never live it down. Uh, honestly, a little bit terrified. We field it. Just go down. All right. Eight passing yards. We can be done with this crap. Game wants us to kneel as we should, but I'm going to risk Albert Johnson throwing a pick to please a uh, uh, high school kid. <laughs> oh, no. Morris comes down with it. That's nine yards. That's all she wrote. Game over. There's no reason for us to run another play, so we will let this clock expire. It should have been a 21-point victory, but instead it's seven. Uh, we'll walk out happy with our win. Maybe it makes it look a little bit better. Oh, look how good our opponent was. They almost beat us. 
Uh, but that almost certainly will clinch a spot in the conference championship game for us. So that is absolutely huge. Chris Fox, player of the game, tackle for loss, and two picks, including a pick six. The defense, absolutely phenomenal. With the exception of like three total pass plays that went for touchdowns. All that said, though, another good victory. And again, with the right chaos, maybe, just maybe, we sneak into the playoffs. Man, we beat them in almost every category except for rushing, which you got to think if we take some of those sacks that we took at the end of the game back, that would look a lot better. We threw for 251, ran for 98 at the end of the day. Two turnovers, but the defense created three. Uh, and at the end, that's really what mattered. The turnovers were huge. And time of possession came up big. But yeah, it's just the defense. They won that game for us. Albert offensively did okay. Uh, 17 to 25 for those 251 yards and two touchdowns. But I mean, he struggled enough. He made some bad throws. And Chris Fox bailed him out. So we improve to nine and two on an eight game winning streak we get the close call we're number 19th in the country with a chance to improve as we move towards our final week of the regular season against niu and i just gotta hope and pray for as much chaos as possible uh well we had some visits but a lot of guys ready to come visit this week and more guys that we can set up a couple of guys either lock us out or commit elsewhere uh, but this is going to be an absolutely massive, massive week for our recruiting. We're a coach of the year finalist. We do have a finalist for the Thorpe, which is fantastic. But what is our ranking? We move up to 16th with a game against NIU that we are absolutely going to be expected to win. They have a D-plus offense. If our defense does anything like they did this last game, we should obliterate the Huskies. Just to see, though, a bowl projection before we call it quits. Right now, they're scheduling us for the Quick Lane Bowl against a 5-5 five and five, uh, UL Lafayette and the Ragin Cajuns. Uh, they're 2-4 and four in conference? Like, come on. You can't pair us up with them. We, we deserve a New Year's Six or, like, something impressive at that point. Unfortunately, that is going to have to do it for this episode. Again, I'm going to be away from home for the holidays. So for about a week, I don't think there will be any uploads, unfortunately. So hopefully, uh, while I'm enjoying my holidays, you guys can do the same as well. And again, if you want to get me a present, you know, there's some simple things like subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, leave a comment telling me what you thought about that game. Was it stupid? Too risky, maybe? to go for some of the stuff that we did. And then if you want to go above and beyond, uh, you know, channel memberships, they're a thing. And it's a good way to support the channel with the added benefit that, you know, you could become a part of this Grey Boys dynasty. Anyways, after you've liked and subscribed and commented, head down to the description where you can find links to my Twitch at twitch.tv slash goodmaster. There's also links to my Twitter, our community Discord, and the college football revamp mod if you don't have it already. All that being said, though, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Goonmaster. You guys are the great boys. Wherever you are, have a happy holidays, and we'll see you later. Adios.